talk about some wide receivers we'll keep this one a little bit shorter than we typically do if you guys have star sick questions throw them down in the comments below a like and a subscribe is always appreciated as well we got four wide receivers that I think a lot of people feel like are on the bubble. They, some people are going to value them really, really highly. Others are going to say, oh, they're washed, they're garbage, don't start them. Let's talk about some of these guys. We'll get deeper as it goes along, as we usually do. But Jamison Crowder is an auto start at this point, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to roll him out there. It makes no sense. We've known he's you know a PPR lord for a while now, but he's, he's producing, man. He's getting targets. Even in a rough offense, he doesn't even need the touchdowns if he's getting 10 targets a game. So you're starting Jamison Crowder. It's a funnel volume type situation. And right now, the three games that Crowder started, he had 24 fantasy points, 17 fantasy points, and 26 fantasy points. Every time you've plugged him in, he's been fantastic. I think you got to keep doing that here, even against a Miami Dolphins defense that has improved from last season. I think it's still a, a solid enough matchup. And whether it's Joe Flacco or Sam Darnold comes back, Crowder is an instant plug Steph, in real quick. just for that volume. I won't spend too much time on it, but where do you think Crowder ranks in terms of PPR points per game? Oh, he's definitely in the top five. He's second behind Devontae Adams. So you're starting Jamison Crowder until further notice. Exactly, exactly. Emerging here at 27 years old. Happy for Jamison Crowder. But let's talk about DJ Moore. And although the fantasy outing was pretty nice against Atlanta, fantastic matchup. We all know that. He was... You know, a lot of people were telling you to start DJ Moore, but he's still clearly that the 1B to Robbie Anderson's 1A. Robbie Anderson saw double-digit targets in this game. DJ Moore only saw five. And Alex, I know we were talking about it last week. The problem with DJ Moore this year is actually not the volume. He's getting almost the same amount of targets as Robbie Anderson, even though he didn't here in week five. But where DJ Moore is struggling is in yards after the catch. He was eighth and yards after the catch in 2019 this year he's not even in the top like 30 the, the yards just aren't there and that's really where dj moore makes his hay he had the touchdown in week five i think a lot of people are gonna plan on starting him again i'm probably willing to plug him in there as a flex which means i'm tempering expectations on what he's going to be able to do in week six against chicago with robbie anderson really being the go-to guy for teddy bridgewater yeah i'm willing to flex him because it you know for where you drafted him you probably don't have a better receiver option because you spent that draft capital on DJ Moore. He's had a couple nice games this year as well. Like he hasn't absolutely cratered your team. And it was nice to see him have the breakaway touchdown last week. If it wasn't for that, though, it was a real bust. And a tough matchup against the Bears. You know, it's not ideal, but I am still willing to flex him. I think you're going to be really scraping the bottom of the barrel and, and stretching it to find a better option right now. So, you know, I'm still playing him over Chase Claypool, who's going to be a hot waiver wire pickup. I'm still playing him over, um, you know, the T.Y. Hilton's of the world over T. Higgins, over Justin Jefferson. I'm playing him over those guys, um, you know, but he's he's a low end wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three for me this week in a tough matchup, but definitely still willing to roll him out there. I'm going to give you a couple of comparison points. DJ Moore or Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown has Philadelphia this week. I'll, I'll take Hollywood Brown. DJ Moore or Robbie Anderson, both against Chicago. Ro oh, Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson is the one there. You're... You can't look at the production and not have Robbie Anderson higher than DJ Moore. You just can't. All right, last one here. Odell Beckham against the Steelers or DJ Moore against Chicago? OBJ. OBJ. Yeah, so you're, you, you probably have DJ Moore in that low-end wide receiver two range, maybe even behind some guys like A.J. Brown, Tyler Boyd, oh, yeah. Darius Slayton. So, yeah, we got DJ Moore as kind of like a, a sit him if you can. If you have a surplus of wide receivers that all have great matchups, I'm willing to sit DJ Moore. I know it sucks because you you put decent draft capital into Moore, but at this point we have enough new information that tells us that he's worth a sit in tough matchups. But let's talk about a guy who you are probably sitting in week five when he absolutely exploded. It's Brandon Cooks. Had 12 targets against the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> caught eight of them for 161 yards. That's 20 yards per reception. Had a touchdown in the game as well. A 30-burger here in week five for Brandon Cooks after putting up a goose egg, in a, a zero in week four in a, an easy Crazy. matchup against Minnesota. So what do we do now with Brandon Cooks? Is he going to fall somewhere in the middle? Or was this just a flash in the pan? Where are you at with Cooks? You got to start him. I, there's a lot that's changed for this team. I mean, Cooks 
had a couple of good, I mean, week two, he had a good game five for 95 against Baltimore on a target. So he's done it already this season has had a couple struggles as well, but now Bill O'Brien's gone Deshaun Watson, you know, is really opening it up. Finally got a good matchup there away from that chiefs, Baltimore, Pittsburgh start. I know the yeah. Minnesota was match. The Minnesota matchup was good and he disappointed, but you can't look at what he did and not be willing to start him this week. I think he's in that flex territory. We talk about DJ Moore, Brandon Cooks. I would probably go, oh, wow, that's a tough one. <laughs> DJ Moore, Brandon Cooks. I'd probably go DJ Moore. Cooks at that point would feel a little bit like point chasing, and Moore has been a little bit more consistent. But if you want upside, I think Cooks is your guy. He is a boomer bust player right now. You just have to roll him out there in your flex, knowing he could get you this 30-piece, or he could be as low as zero. So that's, that's who you drafted in Brandon Cooks. I, I think he's you know, kind of in that Darius Slayton type territory where it's all or nothing. Um, but I'm I'm willing to start him this week against the Titans. Last one here, another great matchup in week six. It's Preston Williams against the New York Giants. And we saw the emergence from Preston Williams. There were a lot of concerns. You know, he hasn't put up double digit fantasy points at all this year until week five against San Francisco. You probably had him on your bench and he gets four receptions for 106 yards and a touchdown in that game for Preston Williams. The concern really was the ACL injury that he had in 2019. That's now been surgically repaired. Like is, is he fully back? There were some questions of, is he confident to put all the weight in and make the cuts that he needs to on that knee? Are you chasing points here? Was this a flash in a plan? Was this something matchup dependent? I'm probably desperate if I'm starting Preston. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think it's a flash in the pan. I think Preston Williams is going to be a productive player. He's a wide receiver four or five. I'm trying to bench him because at this point, it's it's one of those things. If you know you have bye weeks injuries, you plug him in as a desperation guy and you hope that the week he had last week is the week he gives you, but still less than 60% of snaps, still only five targets. You know, he's one of those guys. It's like one play can make your week with Preston Williams. And it's going to happen a couple times in the course of the year where he's a really solid start. I'm just not going to roll the dice on it. Against the Jets, it is a good matchup. But what we saw with the Colts when they played the Jets, their defense jumped on the Jets and they got out to an early lead and they ran the ball the whole game. So you got to take that into consideration. After seeing what the Dolphins just did to the Niners, they could come out and punch the Jets right in the mouth and they might not need to throw the ball all that much. So I'm trying to sit Williams this week. Yeah, I'd sit him too. That 106 yards he had in week five or is it were a career high for him. So he's not a guy that's, that's really ever exceeded 100 yards. And to see that, it does feel like point chasing. And to your point, even though the matchup looks great on paper and you might say, oh, 20 points last week, now is against the Jets, plug him back in. I think he's a little bit more boom bust than a lot of people expect him to be.